Dark blue. New at 11, a police officer is on the wrong side of the law, accused of driving drunk and assaulting an officer. That's according to Hampton Police. That officer, Carmen Johnson, is facing multiple charges tonight. Whoa. What the hell? What? That's a tranny, bro. Yo, that's a tranny. Yeah. Straight up. It's gotta oh, it's be. Just a sister. Oh, it's just a sister. Yeah, it could True. be. It could just be like a dark butt, but. I think it's a training. New at 11, a police officer is on the wrong side of the law, accused of driving drunk and assaulting an officer. That's according to Hampton Police. That officer, Carmen Johnson, is facing multiple charges tonight. Marta Berglund has more on what police say happened and Johnson's future in law enforcement. Well, the officers that pulled Carmen Johnson over say this all started when she almost hit a cop that had pulled over a different car in Hampton. They say she sped away when they tried to stop her. Hampton police charged Portsmouth police officer Carmen Johnson with reckless driving, driving while intoxicated first offense, failure to yield to an emergency vehicle and assault of a law enforcement officer. The charges stem from an incident late Saturday night near Interstate 64 and North Mallory Street. The officers that stopped Johnson say she sped past a separate traffic stop when they tried to stop her, police say she hit speeds of over 100 miles per hour. When Johnson did pull over, police records state she had glassy eyes and was slurring her words. She allegedly told police she was driving from Norfolk after having one drink. Detectives say they found an open alcohol container in her car and a cup of apparent alcohol thrown in the back seat. The officers wrote in a police report Johnson's blood alcohol content was 0.09. That criminal complaint does not outline why police charged Johnson with battery of an officer, but a Hampton police spokesperson told 13 News Now, quote, during the arrest, an HPD officer was assaulted. Johnson is out on bond, but will appear in court on Wednesday. And as for the future of her law enforcement career, the Portsmouth Police Department said they're working on an internal investigation and Johnson is working a non-law enforcement administrative position. Marta Berglund, 13 News Now. On to a Fox 5 exclusive, a Charlotte woman shot at a Buckhead club in a deadly Mother's okay. Day shooting speaks publicly for the first time. The 24-year-old came to Atlanta to celebrate a friend's birthday party when gunfire erupted and two people were killed. Fox News Anjali Proctor joins us from Grady Memorial Hospital where the victim was released this afternoon. Angelique. Good afternoon, Courtney. Well, okay. Lauren Moore says her world has been turned upside down. She said she was actually shot in both of her legs and she'll have to now learn how to walk again. She says this whole thing is so ironic because she came to Atlanta to celebrate and have fun. Atlanta police say bullets started flying at the 1145 lounge on Peachtree Road in Buckhead in the early morning hours of Mother's Day. Six people got shot, two of them were killed. Lauren Moore, who is a bus driver and bartender in Charlotte, oh, is goodness. thankful her life was spared. But she says she will never forget being shot in both legs. Everything was leaving out of me. I just had to fight. All I said was I had to be here for my mom, my siblings, and my friends. And I just kept on fighting. If I didn't fight, I probably would have been here. Moore underwent two leg surgeries and two blood transfusions at Grady. I'm in a city that I don't live in. I just came to enjoy myself for the weekend, and then this happens. She is concerned now about beginning nursing school next month because she can no longer work her two jobs. I was actually working two jobs so I can cover my nursing school. Um, I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm going to figure it out. Her yeah, because you ain't going to get no go for me because it was some sons that shot your ass. <laughs> your go for me going to be fucking. She better be um realistic for what she asked for. Maybe 10000 Ask for 10000 Hope you get it. You ain't getting no big sum like if a, a cop or a white person did something to you. I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm going to figure it out. Her attorney, Terrence Madden, says the city should crack down on club owners like 1145. Look at this scene, though. Look at, look at that. Mm. Look, 
Look at this thing. It's just her, this guy, and this person. If she had been, if, if a white dude had fucking called her the N word, man, it would be fucking 20 people right here standing right. The city should crack down on club owners like 1145 who do not have adequate security to operate. If you're going to run a place where you're entrusted with someone's health and welfare, and you put security that would allow somebody to have guns when you already have a bad record. That's just not something the city of Atlanta can stand. Now we checked with Atlanta police today. They have made no arrests in this deadly shooting. Lauren's GoFundMe page will be on our Fox 5 website as she attempts to pay for nursing school. And the club owners put a statement on their social media that says, in part, the safety and well-being of our patrons and staff have always been our paramount concern. We are live at Grady Memorial Hospital. I'm Julie mm. Proctor. What a horrifying experience for somebody just visiting our city. Angelique, thanks. I can't believe this has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. A devastated mother speaking out tonight on the deadly shooting of her teenage son at a carnival in Delaware. As police continue to search for the gunman, the family is searching for closure. It has started this shit. Carnival season. Shooting niggas at carnivals. Tuesday night and the big story on Action News is the new information into the murder of 16-year-old Zykeer Flowers. He was shot 10 days ago at a carnival outside of the Concord Mall in Wilmington. Tonight, police are hoping a substantial reward will help in the search for his killer. Action News reporter Charles Watson is live in Wilmington now with the full story. Charles. Yeah, hey, Rick, I spoke to the mother, Zakir Flowers, who says she's still in shock over her son's tragic murder more than a week ago. Tonight, the grieving mother is pleading with her son's killer to come forward and do the right thing. I can't believe this has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. Atidia Flowers says she hears about gun violence in Wilmington often, but never expected her 16-year-old son, Zakir Flowers, would... Wait a second. She hears about gun violence in Wilmington often. But never expected her. But that's like the sun logic, right? And it's like all my children can be murderers, but like it would be impossible to imagine like me getting killed or one of them getting killed. It's just the sun, the sun mind. It just has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. Octavia Flowers says she hears about gun violence in Wilmington often, but never expected her 16-year-old son, Zakir Flowers, would fall victim to it nearly three years after her fiancé was killed. For my child. Jesus lost Christ. <laughs> yeah, it can't, it can't be changed. <laughs> it can't can't really be changed. It's just it's just not not gonna work out like that. No pattern recognition. Like if if we were on year like ten of this shit, I'd be like, no, nah, we can change it. But we're on like year four hundred and one of this, so it's not really gonna change. And listen, man, I will say this: this woman right here, the trauma she's going through, man. Like, just think about, like, if she was human, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? If she wasn't a proto. <laughs> yeah. If she yeah. was human, yeah. she would be like, that's a lot to deal with, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If she could fully experience the full spectrum of emotions. Yeah, if her abstract thinking was. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it, it, it protects her. Think about how lucky she is to not have it's that. It's true. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it is a double-edged sword. But but on this this edge of the sword, like she'll man, do all right. Yeah, the man she was about she she the man who she was wanted to marry was killed before they had a chance to get married. Then her sixteen-year-old son is killed three years later. I mean, these dudes aren't like die. They didn't die of COVID or some shit like that. These dudes were murdered. Her son was killed at a carnival. 
know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like this shit, this shit may, if, if she was a glider, it may have cost the glider to commit suicide over it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So, so it's a double edged sword, but she's going to get through this because, like, she's already fucking over it. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's already she's over a, it. Yeah, she, she's, she's already on to the next thing, bro. Yeah, like I'm not even trying to be like blatantly racist or anything, but I can't help but notice like in these interviews, like they don't seem as upset most of the time as you would expect from a glider person. They just don't. Yeah. I mean, I will say this though, man, like most most moms on here, when I see them, regardless of race, they're, 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 um, I, I always expect more. I expect more. I expect you know them to be more upset than they really are. Than they are, but yeah, sons more. Sons kind of get over it more. The thing about sons, we have two different um, scenarios with sons. So we have sons when when it's a white person or it's a cop, and then it's falling out. Right, <laughs> right. Playing. Yeah, they go mammy mode. Mammy mode. And you know, fake yeah. this shit, and got him to be held up, and well, yeah, all that bullshit. I thought we and were past we, this as a country. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like we have two, so I can, you can kind of get confused, you know what I'm saying, with sons. But when it's a son that killed their 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 loved one, yeah, it's usually like, you know, like it's almost as if like they, you know, what I'm saying like they like they went to a restaurant. And the food took too long. <laughs> it's like kind of like that type of thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, well <laughs> let, let me revise maybe my statement a bit. It's like, okay, maybe like gliders aren't necessarily like more emotional in these like TV interviews because, you know, like a lot of the time you're right. Like most people are not as emotional as you'd expect. However, the difference to me seems is like when you have these interviews, like, just the words and the thoughts that the gliders express, like mm -hmm. make it seem like they understand the possible consequences that could have led to these actions that lead to these events happening. Whereas the sons, they're just like, why is this happening? They don't seem to yeah. like understand that like, yo, yeah. if your kid's a drug dealer, he might get killed. Yeah, the, the gliders seem a little more dead on the inside. And yeah. they also thank the fucking police and the surrounding society for cleaning up the mess too. Sometimes they even apologize to everybody else. <laughs> right. Yeah, true. Yeah, they apologize. That too. And my child lost his life. Like, one of the worst phone calls you could ever get. That call came on the night of May 11th after Octavia says Zakir went with friends to have some fun at Lead Fest, an anti-violence carnival in the parking lot of Concord Mall. It was an okay. anti-violence carnival. Oh, yeah, my you already God. Know. You already know. The irony. Oh my God! An anti-violence carnival. Nah, sh she'll get over it. She she's gonna be good. She's gonna be good. Don't worry about it. According to Delaware State Police, a fight broke out between several people near the entrance of the carnival. An unknown individual pulled a gun and fired several shots, hitting Zakir and another 17-year-old victim. Both were rushed to Christiana Hospital, where the 17-year-old victim, while seriously injured, survived. No kid deserved this to happen to him, but, it's like, why me? His mother tells Action News she had just spoken to the 16-year-old about recording a Mother's Day video for his grandmother. She says Zakir, an aspiring sports entertainment lawyer, was someone who was always willing to do whatever he could to put a smile on the faces of others. And he had big plans like any other teen his age as he looked ahead to his junior year in high school. Just got his ID about a month ago. You would have thought it was a license. He was so excited. Like, he just was a different kid. Like, everybody loved God. Making it even harder for Octavia to comprehend That's the 16-year-old's unexpected death. She has this message for Zakir's killer. If you see this and you're out there, just turn yourself in. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and the family tells me a funeral service will be held for Zakir in the coming days. Delaware Crime Stoppers is now offering a $5,000 reward for anyone with information leading to an arrest in this case. If you have any. Yo, um, let's, let's, let's all go over to Rumble, man. Rumble, so I can do this story. Yo, man, when, go ahead. So when you got a carnival full of 
black people, man, everyone, every one of them workers has to be ready. I mean, even the fucking clowns, man. Like, instead of having a bottle of seltzer water, it needs to be mace so they can spray some crazy black dude. Yeah, no, nah, God do. <laughs> you know, like... You never fuck. know. You never know one of these sons is just going to erupt and, and just be belligerent and destroy some shit. But you know what was so funny? You remember, remember the whole Disneyland thing? I remember when that went around, everybody was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's happened at Disneyland. And I'm like, dude, this is just an average day. Like, this is just, like, some people fighting. Like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, they're acting like they never saw, like, a black person chimp out before. Yeah, yeah. And then they were like, oh, my God. I was like, this is relatively mild. <laughs> this is America. Yeah. yeah. Everybody over to Rumble, man. Rumble, I'm about to do the main event story on Rumble, man. Salute to everybody. See you over on Rumble. Um. Uh.